This is a natural response of an RC circuit. So we're going to charge up a capacitor with an energizing circuit and then let it discharge over time and analyze it, see what happens. So here's a 7.5 milliamp current source. Here's a couple of resistors, 20K and an 80K. And then there's a switch, which is closed initially to charge up this cap and then it opens it to equal zero and lets this cap discharge through this resistor 50 kilo ohm resistor this is a 0 0.4 microfarad cap and there's a voltage across this cap okay so we want to find the voltage at zero, so the voltage across the cap at zero, then we want to find tau, the time constant for the exponential decay. We want to find V as a function of time, so the voltage across the cap is a function of time. We want to find the initial energy in the cap, put a little C there. We want to find what is T? for 75% energy dissipation. So how long does it take for 75% of the energy in the cap to dissipate through its load, through the resistor load? Okay, so um, with these natural response things, the first thing you got to do is draw it for T much less than zero. So caps behave as an open circuit when they're connected into a steady state source for a long time. So the switch is in here, but we'll show it closed. Then the, the 20K and the, um, and the 80K are here and the uh, 7.5 milliamp sources here. So this voltage is across the cap. So, you know, you could also show the cap as this little dotted line thing because it's in there, but it's behaving as a as a open circuit because that's what caps do at, at steady state. They will have no current through them because the voltage is constant and the current is the derivative of the voltage times the capacitance. And um, so they just look like an open circuit. So mm, what we can do is, this is kind of the key to this problem, is noting that this 50 kilo ohm resistor is in parallel with the, with the cap. So um, they have the same voltage. So the voltage, the initial voltage across the, the cap is just the same as the voltage across this 50K. So if we had the, we had the current through this through this 50k let's call it i sub 50k then we could use ohm's law and we could get the voltage across this 50k which is the same as the initial voltage across the cap because they're in parallel so we can we can um, we can use current current division the 7.5 milliamps is going up to node node a and uh, and going you know some goes around this way and some goes around that way that's a current division problem so current division we can i at the 50k is just going to be uh, you've got the 20 plus 50 branch and you've got the 80 branch right those are the two branches and then we want to find the current through the 50 so we put the uh, we put the 80 branch on the or the 80 uh 80 branch on the top and this 7.5 here is getting split up that way. So this is going to be 4 milliamps. That's the initial current and then Ohm's law, um, vehicles IR, we can find the, the initial voltage across the, the cap at, at zero is going to, it's just going to be um, 4 milliamps times uh, 50 uh, Kilo ohms is just I R. It's Ohm's law across across here. So this is going to be 200 volts. Okay, 
so we need to find tau now. So we need to draw the the circuit at t greater than greater than zero at from zero on, so greater than or equal to zero. So the cap jumps back into the circuit. I mean, it was there, but now it starts behaving as a, a function of time. It's not just constant. So the the v signal across here will be some function of time, and the switch is open now. So you know that they. Um, the left and the right side of of this thing, they only share the B node, so they're like they're actually like two independent circuits now. So we're only interested in what the right side is doing, what the what the what the capacitor is discharging. So we want to know what is R the R value seen by the cap, and it's just 50k. So tau is R C. It's going to be 50k. Uh, C is 0 0.4 micro. It's going to be 20 milliseconds. So we can solve for V of T through the cap because we know that's going to be the initial, our formula is it's for a, a cap, a natural response of a cap is V sub 0 E to the minus T by tau. And we have all of those things. So it's V sub 0 is 200 and E is E to the minus T by 0 0.020 or 200 e to the minus 50 t just bringing the bringing it's minus 50 t sorry about that it's kind of ugly this is volts for t greater than or equal to zero it's, it's the inverse of 0 0.020 is 50. so that's one answer right there the next one is what is the initial energy in the cap or W sub C at zero? It's gonna, we'll just use our one half CV squared formula. So it's one half, the cap, cap value is um, 0.4 micro and the initial voltage is 200 volts square, we square that. So that's gonna be two, uh, it's sorry, it's going to be eight millijoules. It's the initial energy in this thing. Okay, the last part of the problem is when does it, does the, um, when is 75% of the energy dissipated? So it might help to graph these things, although not totally necessary, but I would like you to graph things on your homework. So let's graph W in the cap of T and um, the voltage in the cap, uh, which is just V of T. So V was 200, and then it goes down to like that. And uh, it's 200 before and 200 after because it's a cap, and they don't step change. And W in the cap was... Likewise, some initial value, 8, and then it dropped down to 0. So what they're asking here, when does 75% of the energy get dissipated? So let's see, this would be 50%. This would be 25% less 2, right? So when the, ener when the energy is 2, we want to know what time is that. Or if you like... You know, 0.25 of 8 is 2 millijoules remaining. So we want to know when, you know, is there 2 millijoules remaining. And so we need a W of T. So W in the cap of T is... We'll just use V of T. It's going to be uh, one half C V of T squared. This notation is confusing because it looks like multiplication, you know, but it's not. We're just doing one half C V, but V is a function of time. We're squaring that. So this is one half the 0.4 micro. And uh, V of T is. 200 e to the minus 50 
t that whole thing squared. So this works out to uh, you multiply all this stuff out, you get eight, which you would expect e to the minus one hundred t eight, which we solved up here at two hundred. It all it makes sense. So uh, this is um, this is um, this is milli um, this is millijoules. This is millijoules. Yeah, this is, it's not apparent necessarily that this is millijoules, but if you work out these numbers, you'll see. So anyway, this is, if you work out this quantity. Anyway, um, so we have W in the cap as a function of time. And we basically want to know when is this thing uh, equal to two millijoules, because that's 80%. or 75% um, will be remaining. 75% of eight is two. So um, take the, um, move the eight over there. So you get eight, um, um, uh, it's, it's um, one quarter, um, it's going to be four. It, so this would be one quarter, and then you take the inverse of both sides. So then the, this would become plus, and that'd be four. And then you take the natural log of both sides, and you end up with um, the time is natural log of four over hundred. Um, it's going to be which is a number thirteen point eight six milliseconds. So that this, this is thirteen point eight six if the units were milliseconds. Yeah. All right, so that's that's that problem.